Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. Today we're trying out a new card, specifically Mycosynth Gardens, and we are putting it into a Phyrexian Dreadnought deck. Now, when I first started playing Legacy back when Shadowmoor came out, blue-white uh, like Phyrexian Dreadnought decks were pretty good back then, and I'm pretty sure they had Standstill in as well, so I've tried to sort of recapture that lost feeling from quite a long time ago and build a blue-white Phyrexian Dreadnought deck, but we're using modern technology to do it. So, we have these four Rosa Sagas, which are a pretty solid win condition in and of this, in, on their own here. They are something that we can also recur with Hall of Helios Generosity, so we can just keep pumping out these Rosa Saga tokens really nicely with this. And then when we finish with our Rosa Saga, we go and get this Dreadnought. Now, I've played a Phyrexian Dreadnought deck once before on my channel with Dress Down to sort of bypass the trigger and get your Phyrexian Dreadnought in, but the problem with that is that it's so bad with the Urza Saga that you're using to fetch it, it just felt like bad deck building and didn't really work. Now, we don't have that now because of Microsynth Gardens. So what we do with this is we pay one and tap this to copy a Dreadnought. So this is pretty good. It's a, it's a two mana way of making a Dreadnought. We don't have to have two mana around the Dreadnought, so potentially three mana, but that's fine. We're getting a 12-12 out of the deal, which is pretty nice. So I think this is going to be pretty decent. At least I'm hoping so. And we've got some good stuff to do underneath a standstill as well. We've got ourselves a currency converter, which I quite like here. We can go fetch this off. And if we have these redundant Fraction Dreadnoughts or Stifles, because we do have cards that aren't necessarily very good on their own here, we can put them through the converter and turn them into some value. And then maybe later uh, we can be recurring Shark Typhoon is sort of our top end that we're trying to get to. And we just got the things you'd expect from a blue deck, really. Four Brainstorm, four Ponder... Uh, the Force of Wills. We've got a minor misstep, one in the main deck and some more in the sideboard. I only want one in the main because of how it doesn't really line up well against the initiative right now. But against all non-initiative matchups, we're pro pretty much going to want more of them. And we've got some plows. So we're just trying to assemble a little standstill lock. Our package for the um, Urza Saga is just one Lantern, one Shadow Spear, one Converter, and then obviously our four Dreadnoughts. Uh, we have two Prismatic Endings. And because we had to fit room for Stifle, we couldn't get the full set in there. But this is what I'm trying to play today. I've not played like a blue-white control out of this for a very long time. So the building on it might be a little bit rusty, but we're going to try and have some fun with it and showcase the Microsynth Gardens is what we're planning to do. And also recapture something from my youth of playing Legacy. Sideboard-wise, we got some interesting ones here. We have a Torpor Orb, which... We're only, this isn't the sort of thing we want main deck, but when it's going to be good against our opponent, it's also going to be good for our Phyrexian Dreadnought. So it's going to sort of do double duty there and be pretty nice. We have a Pithing Needle, which can be found off of our Urza Saga, same with this Graft Digger's Cage. We have two more minor missteps, because that's something I wanted to have more of. I also wanted to showcase a new card, so we're trying this one out. It's going to be good in a lot of matchups, but just not very good in some, so that's why it's more of a cyborg card for now. We've got a couple of Force of Negation for the decks that we have to try and counter. We have two Supreme Verdict, if we have to sort of adopt a slightly more controlling stance along with these two Prismatic Endings. One Hydroblast, because we're in blue and we may as well. And then we have two Purify the Grave, which is a card that I've talked about once or twice before on my channel. So the problem with a lot of Graveyard hate right now is that if it's not Leyline, your opponent just griefs you or Thought Seizes you or Duresses you or Unmasks you or whatever and takes your Graveyard hate away and it doesn't do anything. So if you're trying to cast a spell like a Surgical or whatever, they're just going to take it. If they do that with Purify the Grave, it doesn't work because it's still in your graveyard, so you can flash it back, and they can't stop you from flashing it back. So you do get that slight advantage with this, which is something I'm trying. I've had mixed successes with things like this and Coffin Purge, but I think it's, it's worth playing and it's a bit interesting, and that's what we try and do on this channel sometimes is play interesting stuff. Like yesterday we played the Initiative, so we played sort of like very top-end try hard sort of deck and today we're sort of having a little bit more fun with it and trying out some cards like purify the grave but i do think this is genuinely a useful card i've played it once before and it was pretty good the other option you can have instead of this is surgical which yes it does get discarded but it's a turn zero effect that you have that's the only downside with purify the grave it isn't a turn zero but if your opponent is going to be discarding you i'd much rather have the purify the grave so at least i have it so it's something a bit different than we're going to try here so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just try and set up a standstill, Shark Typhoon, as a saga behind it, and win a game that way. So, before we get into it, I think all we've got to do now is a plug. Like, comment, subscribe. These things cost you nothing and really help me out. So, do them. Alright, let's jump into a league with sort of uh, 
a blast from the past of blue white Frexian Dreadnought. So this hand has Island Ponder, which is normally a pretty good place to start. We do have a Force of Will to protect ourselves. I think this is just about a keeper, but I'm not a big fan of what Wasteland can do to us with this. We've got quite a lot of lands in our deck. A Lotus Petal. So our opponent is going to be playing some sort of initiative by the looks of it. Could be Epic Gamble. Sort of what these cards generally narrow it down to. Could be a uh, Money Red Prison. This is a Chalice, we have to counter it. A Walking Ballista for one. That is irrelevant, that is fine. If that's the scariest thing they're doing, I'll take that. We're not going to have to worry about Wasteland in this matchup, which is lovely for us. So, let's try and find something good with a Ponder here. We've got a land, we've got a Dreadnought, but where do we go from there is the question. I think we have to just go any order and do it again, because we can't go through all of those cards. Okay, a Brainstorm for next turn. If we can clear the board and drop a Standstill, that's going to be good, but it's probably just going to end up being a Standstill that goes into the Force of Will. And the Shark Typhoon is probably just going to be better because it can take back the initiative and all sorts of things. If they just have the Walking Blister and nothing else, that's pretty good for us. So I take a little hit from that. It's one, which is certainly less than I was expecting. It could also be some sort of like Khan based deck. Okay, this is looking more like the initiative here. Just nothing off of it. Interesting. Not sure why our opponent kept their hand, to be honest. Okay, so we do have a Microsynth Garden, so we have a land. I think we want to brainstorm first, though. And see what we're looking at. Okay, so we've got a Stifle. We've got another blue source here. Okay, so I think we're putting one Stanston on top and one Shark Typhoon on top. I think we want to put the... Actually, no, we'll put the Shadow Spear on top. That's the least exciting one. And then we'll put the Shark Typhoon on top. And we'll pitch one Stanstill. So we'll play out our Tundra. This gives us the option for Stifle. It gives us the option for plow if we really want to do that as well so if, if we get an option of plowing and then just putting dropping a standstill if our opponent doesn't do anything then i'm going to take that one two so they can play a solitude here so we're going to take one from this but we have the counter spell for solitude and then we can sit under a standstill okay, our microsynth gardens so this is blue and a one okay that just resolved so we have a shark typhoon that we can cycle and get a creature into play we're in a reasonable spot here. I, d I don't know what our opponent's hand really accomplished and why they kept it. There's a Shadow Spear that we knew was coming. So we can try and cycle a Shark Typhoon here to hit a, a land drop if we want to. And we're probably doing that on our opponent's turn anyway. So I think we just go ahead and do it now and try and develop our mana. Okay, we have a Dreadnought. So if they crack our standstill, we get to make a Dreadnought with our Stifle. And then we also get to copy it with Mike Smith Gardens and just swing for lethal. But we've got a little Shark Typhoon hanging out for now. Another Dreadnought, sure. All right, they have an Aganjo. Okay, I see how it is. Their deck can't deploy any threats without breaking a standstill, but ours can. So if we just sort of look at each other for a while. Now, because we've got a full hand, this is a time where they can crack the standstill and it might force us to discard. A White Plume Adventurer. I would very much like to draw three cards here. And I think we just want to counterspell this. And we can pitch our standstill here. We've got so many cards here. Okay, so we have a Force of Will and a Stifle. So we're going to only play one of our Fraction Dreadnoughts here. So we play this one. We will Stifle that trigger. Then we'll pass a turn. Holding up Force of Will and also making ourselves a second Fraction Dreadnought in their end step. So we're in a good spot, I would say. We have 24 power on board with a Force of Will backup. And a removal spell and a Shadow Spell. We got everything we want here. Our opponents should be scooping this one up soon. I'm trying to think what beats us here. Touch the Spirit Realm is surprisingly good against Dreadnought because it gets the come to play trigger again. There's a Lotus Petal. There's another Lotus Petal. Five mana. A Solitude. I think we can go ahead and snap this one off. And counter the Solitude. They're on 12 life as well. So we don't need to make a token this turn. We don't need to turn this into a thing because we have lethal here. Because if they have a removal spell and we go to copy it, we kind of fizzle. Whereas this way we get to attack. And if they don't, if they try to remove it, then we copy it in response. This is the way we don't get blown out of removal. If we crack the fetch, we give our opponent opportunity to like remove this with something. Okay. Touch of the spirit realm. So just going to get exiled. And I guess we play out Shadow Spear. I don't think we need to equip it this turn. I think it's better just for us to hold up something. 
So we can have the actual one or we can have the the copy. I think we'll just let this one die. So we have lethal on board. We have a removal spell that can hit a two drop, which is unlikely to be the thing we need to remove. But our creature does have trample and it'll be a 13 power guy. So even if it doesn't kill them, it should do a big chunk to them and take out whatever creature they play this turn. So they play an initiative creature. We attack, we gain the initiative, we kill their guy. They need something like a palace jailer here, which I imagine if they had, they would have snapped off by now. Chromox. Okay, so this means our opponent's probably got one card in hand. It could be a solitude, which would be awkward for us. Season dungeon here underneath it. There's a solitude. So we do lose our Phyrexian Dreadnought. We do gain 12 life in the process. So we've got some draws, like Microsynth Gardens or Stifle are both pretty good here. Shark Typhoon is pretty reasonable. We can we can suit this up if we need to. We could always remove their Chrome Mox here because I don't think our Prismatic Ending is getting any better. Is having a 1-2, is having a 1-1, one, one, uh, it's got to be a 2-2 two, two Shark. Uh, we can just flash it in and kill their Solitude. I think that's probably a better play. Just use it as a removal spell at cantrips. Then next turn we may be prismatic ending. The only thing Chromox lets them cast is another solitude. So we'll crack this one. I think we'll get a tundra here because they're not going to attack our mana base at all. Make two two. Draw a card. We've got a plow as well, so we're in a pretty okay spot here. Now we can get punished if they play a threat here. Not necessarily punished, but it can be awkward. Okay, so let's do the thing. Stifle Nought with Plow back up. So this turn, we are going to blow up their Chrome Mox so they can't cast a uh, Solitude if they draw one. So we have 13 damage on the board and we equip the Shadow Spear next turn. Let's see if this is good enough. All right, looks like we're playing some more magic. My friend's got something. Seasoned Engineer. Okay. This is actively bad for our opponent, I think. Unless they have a Source of Plowshares in hand. That is the way this goes wrong for us. There's Planes. Planes of our own. Let's equip this to our guy. Go attacks. Okay, they're just deciding to take the damage and not carry on with this game. The Season Dungeoneer was just a bait, maybe? I don't know. I guess they just play things and hope we make a mistake. All right, sideboarding. We would like our Supreme Verdict, I think, on this one. I don't think the Minor Misstep is going to be that useful here. The Torpor Orb is going to be great. It's right around. Stifle, uh, sorry, Standstill is a bit of a dangerous proposition right now. What do I like here? The Prismatic Ending can blow up a Chalice, which is something that I'm a little bit worried about considering we have all these Dreadnoughts in our deck. So I'd much rather have one of these and these things here. Do we want an additional Prismatic Ending for Chalice is the question. And if so, what do we remove to accommodate it? Tough. It's a tough choice, this one. The Currency Giver is a nice thing that we can go and get off the Saga if we are underneath a Chalice as well. Could be one of our Shark Typhoons, although these do sail over and take the initiative back on occasion. I don't think we can get rid of any of our stuff. Oh, it's the Soul Guide Lantern, isn't it? We don't need a Soul Guide Lantern in this matchup at all. Um, yeah. All right. Let's give this a go. We kind of need a force for the first turn because turn one, Seasoned Engineer is pretty hard to beat. So we have a removal spell, we have a force of will, we have a redraw. I think we can keep this one. I've got something scary, we can ignore it for a turn, potentially. Just a Caracas. Okay. A Microsynth Gardens. So we can make a turn to 12-12 if we want. Uh, sorry, a turn 3, isn't it? Because we need an additional mana for that as well. Yes, yeah, so there's a turn 3, 12-12. Let's see what our opponent attempts here. The Seasoned Engineer. An Archon of Amiria. Is this fine? We let this resolve. Then we will plow this. We want to hold the Force of Will for the thing that introduces the initiative to the game, ideally. So I think this turn, we want to play out. If we play out the Flooded Strand, we can represent good old-fashioned Counterspell as well, which you see in Sharks Typhoon decks normally, but obviously we're playing Stifle Nought in our deck, so we don't have the space for all the controlly elements. But our opponent doesn't know quite. Okay, so this is going to make our Force of Will a lot less good. So this is probably going to name Human, and they're going to play Seasoned Dungeoneer. So next turn, we play a Phyrexian Dreadnought. We hold up Force of Will to counter the thing that kills our Dreadnought, and then we race. Sure. You got it. A brainstorm. I don't think we have time to do that right now. Let's go and get ourselves a Tundra. Cast this. So I can keep this one that's untapped if we want to. 
Is that better than the mic keeping the microsynth? If they blink the microsynth, at least it comes back as a land. So I think we just sacrifice the actual dreadnought here. Because at least if they flicker this, it comes back as a land and we haven't lost as much that way. Because that's the one thing we can't interact with here. So we have a 12-12. Our opponent has a 3-4, potentially a 4-5 this turn. Uh, sorry, uh, a 6-5, a, a 6-7 this turn because they're going to forge. But we do get to smash back with our Friction Dreadnought. If they have land, if they have a, a Cavern of Souls into Solitude, that can take out our Dreadnought. But we've basically put on, been put on notice that we need to deal with this because we can't counterspell it. We need to put the clock down and hope that it's good. So here we are. Okay, they scry two to the bottom. That's a good sign for us. That shows that they're in search of something. There's a planes that we know they chew it up. Okay, an uncountable human is another dungeoneer. It's a palace jailer that we can't counter. Yikes. This is real bad for us. So this game is probably about 80% in our opponent's favor right now. Sure. Touch of the spirit realm. Okay, that's a problem. I assume they're going to keep that on top. Because that kills our dreadnought and does all sorts of things. So... We've got some options on our next turn, and I don't think many of them are very good. So, we can brainstorm to try and find a removal spell. Or we can Shark Typhoon to try and steal the initiative and the thing, but we know they have a touch of Spirit Realm. So I think we're supposed to brainstorm here and see if we can find something. We do have these Supreme Verdicts in our deck, so maybe we could be looking at those as some outs here. Torpor Orb, a little bit on the late side, truth be told. But we can deploy that and then a Dreadnought. Is that good? I don't know, to be honest. Feels a little bit awkward. I don't even want this Force of Will. We can keep one just to stop a removal spell and probably the currency converter goes here. So this turn we can we can make a, a Dreadnought here. But then we know they've got the Touch of Spirit Realm, so just blink it and it'll die. So we have to make the Torpor Orb first. Because that way if they blink it, it doesn't matter. This stops them blinking their own things to go further into the dungeon. But we're going to take four, five, six, uh, possibly seven next turn. That's going to be half our life total. We do get our Phyrexian Dreadnought. We can stifle the Touch of the Spirit Realm as well. Obviously, we couldn't do all of that last turn. Now, the problem with Seasoned Dungeoneer is that it can't be blocked by creatures. So they can hit us for seven this turn, potentially. And then next turn, they can hit us for six. So that's not going to leave us a lot of wiggle room. Cavern of Souls. Okay, so they didn't pump that guy. That's good. Not great, but okay. Means we're very unlikely to be able to counter anything that they play at this point. We haven't seen if they're on Chalice or Swords yet, though. Touch of the Spirit Realm. So just hard casting this touch to take out our Torpor Orb. Sure, now we can stifle Nought on our turn. But they're going to have a 4 1 that we can't block and a 4. So we are, we are just dead this turn. No, on our next turn, unless we draw... No, we can't even Supreme Verdict, can we? Because we haven't got enough lands. I think we've just done there. Right. We still don't know if they're on... Maybe I should have let them reveal the, the cards when they go into the dungeon next turn, just so we could see if they're on um, plows or not. On the play, I'm a little bit happier with the idea of Standstill as a card that we can actually run in our deck. Where would I even think about putting this, is the question. Yikes. I think we have one Standstill here. Um, all right. So our plan is, okay, this is a turn three Dreadnought. We have an emergency brainstorm. We have a Stifle, so we can Stifle the first trigger. Or we can make a turn two Dreadnought, actually. Then we keep this, and we start out with a Flooded Strand in play. Hope our opponent mulligans a little bit. Normally the initiative deck has to mulligan. All right, they kept a bad seven or a bad six in the first game, so maybe they've done that again, hopefully. It's tough out there for uh, people right now when they're got to deal with this initiative nonsense crashing into their face let's see how bad their first turn is and Amiria tapped okay not so bad so I think we will just make a dreadnought once upon a time this was like the best thing you could do in legacy a long time ago so we need to kind of fade a solitude hitting our guy or a plow but if they pitch two cards to dreadnought we've sort of traded two for two there it's a case of what their follow-up threat is because if they can't remove this dreadnought then we get another dreadnought next turn okay so they have a plow but that's their turn. Not great for us, but also not terrible. Let's try and brainstorm. Torpor Orb. I would very much like to have a Torpor Orb. I don't think we want these prismatic endings. I think we really want either of them right now. Like, if they had a chalice, they'd they play it there anyway. Alright, let's crack this for a Tundra. 
The initiative will not be a thing in this game for a while, at least. We're going to have to remove this. And we've got 30 life to work with with their aggro deck that now doesn't have their best aggro pieces. We've got a redraw here. We've got spot removal. We've got a rat. So we've got a lot of stuff. There's a chalice. Okay, they do have chalices in their deck. Just after we shuffled our things. Sure. They had to have drawn that off the top. Okay, that's fine. We can just let this crack us for a little bit if we want to. Try and get something good with the Supreme Verdict. Do we want to Shark Typhoon for one? Is a redraw to get us further into our deck? How useful is a 1-1 one, one going to be? To spec, not very. If we draw a basic, we can make it a 2-2. Two, two. See what our opponent plays. Touch of the Spirit Realm. So we have a choice here. We can copy our Torpor Orb to make sure we still have a Torpor Orb. But I think we let this go and then we try and wrap away what they play. It's going to be a White Plume. Because the only problem with using the Microsynth Gardens like that is it takes us off of the mana to cast our only removal spell. They can't cast another spell because of Touch of the Spirit Realm. I think we are just going to take this redraw with the Shark Typhoon here. Microsynth Gardens. Okay. So we can get rid of this Touch of the Spirit Realm now, right? So we can go white, blue, white, and then we can make black here. And we can pay one white mana to do that. To cast this targeting touch the spirit realm. Oh no, that's not enough, is it? We need one more, don't we? And our land's going to come in tapped, isn't it? Based on that, uh, I think we might have to hit the chalice here to unlock our plow. So we have to go white, blue. This is one. It's a two mana spell. Gets rid of the chalice of the void. All right. So we have a supreme verdict to follow up with soon. What we can do is we can, if our opponent plays something like a white plume adventurer or something, we can plow the creature that's going to be able to block our shark, attack, get the initiative, and then supreme verdict with us having the initiative, which we can keep for two turns. So we have options here. They know that we've got something, most likely a plow, because we got rid of the chalice. Unless they just think that that's something that we would want to do. Just out of nowhere. Okay, so it's going to be Seasoned Engineer. Sure. So this Arkham of Amir is not going to attack this turn because they don't want to lose the initiative. That would be my assumption right now. This is the only spell they get to cast this turn to kill this guy. And then we can seize the initiative and then kill this Dungeoneer. Alternatively, we can just race, maybe. They're evoking... A solitude. Interesting. Okay, so they get the initiative this turn. But we can make a three power shark for next turn. And we might be able to catch multiple things with a supreme verdict. I think we want to be able to take the initiative before we wrath. Okay, they're going for the scry, which is is an interesting trade-off for us, whether or not we would rather take the damage or let them have better draws. They put two on the bottom, which is good that they didn't find the thing they're looking for, but bad that they managed to get rid of some bad cards. So we're gonna take a hit here. How much is it gonna be for? They could have guaranteed a pump here if they wanted to. City of Traitors. Okay. What have you got for us, opponent? Okay, let's cycle this. Blue. And let's make a 3-3 Shark. We have a Force of Will. Okay. Oh my god, we do have Urza Sagas in our deck. Excellent. Skyland. And we're just going to hang this Saga out here. And we have the beatdown going right now. And if at any point they have to overextend and put a load of stuff into play, we can just nip in for three and then wrap the board. We've got a force of will if there's something untoward that we need to deal with. But we win this race quite handily at present. Especially since we've got a Shadow Spear in the not too distant future. They go into Stash this turn probably. So Catacombs will give them another creature. But again, like I said, we can wrath that way. They could go into Arena if they want to get towards the Archive. They can sort of cut across the dungeon. But I think they're probably better off just making more threats via the Catacombs. Yeah, there's a Stash. City of Traitors we know about. A Lotus Petal. Opponent doing something in our upkeep. Looks like they're hard casting a solitude here. I think we'll say no to this one. Blue, blue. That was a stupid waste of my mana. So I think we're going to go and forge here. Just make our guy bigger. So we kill them next turn. So we're ideally, we're looking for something off this ponder, like a force to keep ourselves protected. Prismatic ending. I don't think we want any of these. We get any order. Shuffle library, yes. All right. So. We're probably not getting aggroed out in the immediate future. But if our shark gets to connect one more time, we win the game. Because we hit them for five, and then they take five off of the trap room. And we can also pump out an Ezra Saga token. And we can get a Shadow Spear. Their guy is growing in size. That's not too worrying for us. Uh, elite Spellbinder. 
That's fine. We get the Shadow Spear, put it on our shark, it tramples over, we kill them. They need something else from what they have right now. Back to us. A ponder. We can also just make some Dreadnoughts if we want to. But I think the Shadow Spear wins us the game right now, so I think we should be doing that. So I think we're probably tapping with this mana to make a guy. And then we'll get ourselves a Shadow Spear. Then we want to cast the Ponder first in case we find a Force of Will. Because they might be waiting for us to equip. Um, any order, I think. Let's equip this to our Shark. A big Shark with a Spear. Okay, we get them because we've dealt them the damage now, so we get the trap. Death by your own initiative. Probably not the cleanest of games I've ever played, but we got there in the end. We beat the initiative. We got to do our thing with our Dreadnoughts and stuff. Having a Dreadnought uh, source to Plowshed or Solitude or whatever gives you a lot of life to work with, and especially if they're not redeploying really stuff. But I think in the first and third game, our opponents should have mulliganed to bet hands. But the, yeah, the games we won, I don't think our opponent had good hands. All right, let's go to the second round. So this opening hand is not keeper. We have two spells that don't really do anything right now. So let's try again. Okay, I can keep this. Maybe we can fish for something to do with the Dreadnought. Uh, we can make the Dreadnought, I guess. I suppose we're probably putting back a Brainstorm here. Ponder is just better than Brainstorm for these sorts of situations. If our opponent gives us an opportunity to drop a standstill, that'd be pretty nice. So maybe we're supposed to play the Currency Converter first. Uh, okay, our opponent's playing the Death Shadow Grief Reanimate build because they just pitched a Death Shadow to this. So we're going to be losing some stuff here. So probably the Ponder goes. If they reanimate, we probably lose the Currency Converter or the Dreadnought then. Depending on what the, their hand consists of right now. Yep, so there's a Ponder, like I said. They got the reanimate as well. They could just have a good old-fashioned Thought Seize and take another card as well. We'll see how bad it is. Yep. Uh, okay. So we're basically starting this game out on a multi Five? No. My Malta four, pretty much. Not a great way to start your opening hand there. Very funny deck. Very funny indeed. So we'll play this one out because it can't be hit by a wasteland. This standstill, not going to be good. But if we can draw a land, we might be able to deploy a Dreadnought. Now, the problem with Dreadnought is that it's snuff outable, which is a real issue. But it will more or less kill a Death Shadow player in one hit, as a general rule, because their life total is probably going to be below 13. Source Power Share is very good in this matchup. If they have two shadows and you plow one, they both die. Okay, no second land from our opponent though. I think we have to go and get a play an, an island here because our opponent has wastelands. Okay, I guess. Which one do we want to get wastelanded the least? I guess we're going to play a Microsynth Gardens this turn. So we're probably putting the hall followed by the saga, I think. And then we'll play out this Microsynth Gardens. So wasteland that. Then we play the Microsynth Gardens next turn, and we go again. Or we can play out the Urza Saga, depending on if our opponent deploys any threats that require us to then go and fish up a Shadow Spear to stay in the game. A Brainstorm, sure. I could counter this to try and mess with our opponent a little bit, but I don't think this is where the fight should be picked. We can play around the days at the moment, though. No Wasteland, okay. Okay, they've got a play in the second main phase by the looks of it. Taking two life. It's going to be a Shadow. Do we want them to have a shadow or do we just want to have our Dreadnought? I think I'd rather protect the Dreadnought here. The Dreadnought Matt, does a lot against the shadow here. So, I think this turn we hang out this Saga. Cast this Dreadnought. We're going to get snuffed out here. We have the Force of Will for that, but we can't play around the days. Okay, so we're going to sacrifice the tapped one here. Reason being, I would quite like to block this turn if possible. So we have Force of Will up. We have the biggest creature on board that our opponent kind of has to hang back and block. A ponder, sure. We're just holding up the force of will for snuff out, basically. So if they pay the four life as well, it's going to be pretty nice. Next turn, we can also make a saga construct, which won't be big, but it'll be something. Okay, we don't get to do that next turn. We lose our saga here. Snuff out. No, thank you. Our opponent's got two cards in hand. We can get dazed here, but we haven't been dazed by anything else we've done. So. Okay, they have a force to force back with, sure. Okay, so 8, 9, 10, 11. So our opponent kills us next turn. We could draw a plow here. Does that do anything? No. We would need to draw an ending. Oh, no, we knew what we were drawing, didn't we? We knew during the hall. Sorry. Ugh. Right. Okay. Not a fun one. We have these minor missteps, though. 
We don't really want to be two for one ourselves in this matchup, so we get rid of those. We would very much like to have these prismatic endings as well. And I'd like these uncountable kill your guy spells. They feel quite nice. So we need to cut two more cards to fit these in. The Sogai Lantern definitely has text here. So there's a currency converter and a bunch of other things. So is it going to be the standstill? I think it might have to be the standstill that goes. We could also play a Pithy Needle to name Wasteland. That feels like something we're probably incentivized to do here. I like the currency converter against all their discard effects. Yeah, I think we'll just get rid of this standstill and run it like this. Standstill not as good as it once was, sadly. But we're not trying to play the best deck we can play right now. Not be playing this. We'd be playing something like Delver or Breakfast or Initiative. Or the deck that our opponent's playing. I think those are probably the four best decks right now. In my opinion, at least. And then it's probably Painter. So we're on the play here. We're kind of missing some land here. We do have a Brainstorm. I think we will keep this. And just hold up Stifle or Brainstorm on turn one. So maybe we can get a fetch land here. That'd be quite nice. Oh, here we go. They know that we run Stifle because we, we've shown it to them. Really want to draw a land there. We cast this Brainstorm and hopefully draw a land. They could crack their fetch now. They should crack their fetch now. Yeah, okay. Oh, we missed on all of our lands. I think we are done now. I think that's game over. I don't think we can win here. So we'll put this one on the bottom of the two cards. We'll put one of the plows there. Yep, that's game over. I think our opponent's just going to wasteland us and then we're done. Our opponent has to like have nothing for quite a few turns after doing that. Yikes. Punish for keeping a one lander with the brainstorm. I figured seeing four cards, we should probably hit a land. Now, we could have hit like a, a colorless land and that wouldn't have been very good either. The Supreme Verdict might also be somewhat taxing to cast based on the mana pips on it. Because we have eight colorless lands in our deck. Sorry, nine. I think we've got the Hall of Heload as well. Our opponent took a very long time to resolve that brainstorm. Here comes a grief. If we get another turn, we, get, we at least get to play the Pith and Needle potentially on Wasteland. Which would be nice. But I'm not a fan of the spot we're in. We've got a decent chunk of removal. I think if our opponent reanimates this grief this turn and they take both of our plows, for example, we are not playing the plow on top of our library. We play the pithy needle first because we just can't afford to get wastelanded. If they take the pithy needle, it means they got wasteland. Yep. Okay. Not going to go great for us. Oh, they didn't have a second land either. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. Well, now at least we have the stifle for the wasteland. We have some removal. This game has gone weird. Why did our opponent... Okay, they've got a ponder as well. So, wouldn't mind a ponder myself. They did not shuffle their library with their ponder. Okay. And a dreadnought. Not the best of times for us. What to bin off here is actually kind of tricky. I think it might be the verdict, just because we're so far away from casting it. Right, so they got three mana now. Or oh, three lands, so. Very unfair. A soul guide lantern. I don't think we can... I don't think we can deploy that. We have lots of removal here. So we're not dying to any aggro creatures anytime soon. We just need to not die to Wasteland. So we're probably discarding the Soul Guide Lantern. We've got the Stifle, so we might be in a position where we could just want to smash a Dreadnought in. Now our opponent's probably got a Snuff Out in hand, judging by the fact they haven't really played a lot yet. But they can hit themselves with three life this turn. That still doesn't get them to Death Shadow territory. We're just playing this silly old game. A Brainstorm. This is tough, because if our opponent has a Wasteland, I think we need to pass, discard a card, and then hold the Brainstorm back to cast our opponent's turn to make sure that we're not getting Wasteland, because we can't just put this down face for Wasteland. So what are we going to get rid of here? Probably the Dreadnought. It's either Dreadnought or a Plow. Okay, let's get rid of one of our Plows. The Prismatic Ending is flexible, so we might be able to hit an unusual permanent our opponent plays. A Brainstorm, sure. We can't afford to stifle a polluted delta crack. We just have to... If they play a wasteland, then we basically can either get one use out of our tundra or we just have to hold it up forever. So it's not great. Flooded strand. No wasteland. Okay. So they can just sack a, a fetch land and trade it for a stifle in our hand. That's a choice that they're thinking about. But what we want to do here is brainstorm it a turn. They'll probably crack a fetch right now because they know they can do so safely. 
They might let this, they might try and attack this since they know that we're stuck on one land. What have you got for us, opponent? Okay, so they're hurting themselves a little bit here. Trying to get the Death Shadows online. Going to be another one? It is going to be another one. Okay. And then they're just going to cast a Daze. So what they might do here is... They, I was surprised they didn't want to bounce their own land so they could hurt themselves a bit more. Just try and get this game over and done with. We drew a Tundra. I don't think we Dreadnought here. I think we hold up these two Stifles or Plows. Again, we kind of have to play around Wasteland. So hopefully our opponent will play a land drop. Her Grief. We can Stifle this trigger. Try and pass the end step. They can have a days for this. They do have days. Okay. Ottawara. We play this. I think it's more important to get the Dreadnought down, actually. Force of Will, Pitching Reptide Regent. Okay. So that sadly goes away. I don't think we need to plow this grief anymore. And we can save something for a Death Shadow. Now, they might make a horrible... They know we had two plows. They didn't know about the third one. So they could play a Death Shadow as a 3-3 which would allow us to plow the grief and kill both of their creatures. That would be aces, thought seas. All right, I guess we are trying to plow this in response then. We have no cards. It's been a pretty grim old game, I would say. Had to uh, discard quite a few cards to hand size. Okay, probably looking at shadow or something this turn. Oh, I put me on my misery opponent, come on. There it is, sure. Go another one. My opponent's playing very slowly. Okay. A little bit late on that one. We can at least counter the next Death Shadow. But we don't have a lot of removal left in our deck because we've already spent quite a bit of it. A grief. Well, we can't do anything about that. The misstep's not going to be able to help there. All right. Ponder. It's a good start, perhaps. I guess that's one way we can try and play the game. So we take seven this turn. Next turn we play a Dreadnought out. Okay. Right, it's a plan. Quite how good the plan's going to be, I don't know. But... Is that a reanimate targeting the grief? Yep, yeah, that would do us. Like, we can stifle the trigger, but then we just have two dead draws. So our opponent played very slowly and absolutely thumped us. Uh, would have been nice if... I think they could have played that a bit quicker for us. Got, like, six minutes difference on the clock there. But, all right. Move on to the next round. So we are on the draw. This is our opening hand. We've got Island Ponder. We've got enough lands to play the game on. We might be able to drop a standstill if our opponent is playing a slower deck. We don't have a force, but ooh, Flood is Drowned. Maybe this is slow. It could just be a Delver, though. A snow Covered Island. Pond. Okay, maybe this is a time where we get to actually deploy the Standstill. And it'll either get two cards out, Force of Will Wise, or three cards for just being a Standstill. We'll see how we go. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I think this has to be blue just in case of Wastelands. I think we just have to get ourselves an island and go fishing for. Like, these are exciting cards. We can make the thing. If we want to. So next time we're playing, probably playing the Ezra Saga. So I think we go Brainstorm, Tundra, Dreadnought. So next time we play the Saga and we either play Stifle Nought or we play Standstill. Both of those options feel pretty reasonable. We'll see what our opponent does here. Snake, Ice Fang, sure. Stifle looking less appetizing as an option. Uh, the, sorry, the, the Standstill looking less Appetizing, although we can as a saga stand still and just play an as a saga game. The downside is our opponent has wastelands, but I don't think this Yorion deck has that many wastelands if it runs them at all. I think we're just going to play the saga game with a standstill and play. I think taking the one damage from this is fine. We're going to get two creatures out of this and whatever we comes out the back end. Okay, the standstill resolved. If our opponent wastelands us, then fair enough. Got, got. I think this has the most chance of success here. They have a Death Touch 1-1. One, one. Okay, they're just cracking it immediately and giving us some cards. I'll take that. Sure. An Abundant Growth on that as well. And another Abundant Growth. Sure. Very abundant. So we take one here. We have a lot of cards. I think we're looking at playing this out. And then we play out our Dreadnought with a Stifle. We have Force of Will. We also have Brainstorm if we need that. We don't have to discard any cards. We use all the cards from the standstill. Which is pretty nice. Our opponent does have a full grip as well. How much do I care about this prismatic ending? I think we will brainstorm in response and see how things pop off. Wowzers, trousers. Um, I think we can just put two shark typhoons on top of our library. Oh no, uh, we're only going to get to draw one of them, aren't we? Because one of them gets shuffled away. So we probably shuffle away one standstill and keep the shark typhoon on top. I think I will counter this because we have so many force of wills kicking around. 
And we can pitch the standstill. Now they do have the Ice Fang with Death Touch. A Green Sun Zenith for two. I think we snap this off as well. So we could get set up the currency converter Shark Typhoon loop as well now. In this case of do we want this token right now or do we want to start making shark tokens? I think we probably have to grind all the value here. So I think we just make a token. Then we go and get ourselves a currency converter. That's Tundra. There's a hit them for 11. We'll trade off into the Ice Fang, but there's a lot of trample damage. And we need to get this Ice Fang off the board at some point. So next turn we just start playing Shark Typhoons and we can Hall of Helios Generosity them back when we want to. We can also Hall of Helios Generosity the Urza Sagas and get that going. So maybe this is one we actually get to showcase the sort of the late, later game engine of the deck that we have instead of just trying to make a, a big old 12-12. All right, sure. Some nice life total padding there. We have white removal, so the Uro is not too scary. We also have a um, a Caracas in our deck, I believe, so we can ping out our play if that happens. Our opponent is showing us four colours so far. I don't know if they're going to have red or not. They did not shuffle their library. Don't like that very much. But All right, so we have a Ponder here. I don't think we need to do that. I think we're just going to head into Shark Town. Attack with this one. We make this now to make our... No, we don't need to do it now, do we, actually? No, we just take the two damage here. So we could have pondered there looking for an answer to the Uro. Or we can do our Shark Typhoon to look for an answer. Ponder obviously sees more cards. But I think I just want to start getting our Shark Typhoons going. Because we also get the value of the currency converter every time we Shark Typhoon. Sure, so there's the Uro. And it's going to be better to remove this than Countless Better anyway. So we can look for an answer next turn if we want to. Flood Strand, our opponent's got three cards in hand. I'm going to attack with the Dried Arbor into our Shark Typhoon. No. Blue, blue, one, one. And we get our card draw from the cycling. What's our opponent doing here? They're just fetching around Stifle, like, maybe. Oh no, they got something. An Endurance. They timed that really poorly. Sure. Okay, so this time I think we start out with the Ponder. There's a Plow that we wanted. We don't particularly want this Dreadnought, though. But we can shuffle that way with the Ponder. So put that on top, then the Ponder. Then the plow. Shuffle library, no. I think we will plow this now just so we get some information about how the rest of our turn is going to go. Okay, so that worked for us. So we can plow this as a saga. We can hold up the misstep or the shark typhoon. I don't think we need to attack here. We can also just put the shark typhoon on top. Yeah, sure. Like, we have the misstep for that, but I don't really think that's one we care about from hitting that guy. Uh, we can double block the endurance with these two and just lose one guy anyway. And we've got more sagas coming. We can just keep looping the sagas if we want. Abundant growth, sure. An ice fang. Yeah, that's fine. We've got cantripping flyers as well. Ramanap excavator. Okay, so that's giving them some reasonable value over there. Currently only fetch lands, but waste lands are probably in their deck. Because these Yorion decks love to be greedy. Savannah. It's a green sun. No, they're just putting Yorion to hand. Okay, then we'll cycle this end of turn. Put it under the currency converter. That's a card. Get a little value there. Okay, there's Dreadnought that we knew was coming. This is something we're probably going to cycle into the thing. Uh, I think we are making a construct. Oh, uh, let's get the thing, isn't it? Sorry. So I think we ponder first. Stastor with Dreadnought. Kind of want the land, but not really anything else. So that's pretty handy. We can just do that. And we can shuffle away the cards on top of our library and start doing some stuff. Just sort of accruing some value here. Our opponent is more or less doing the same. If they're Yorion, they can endurance away one of our Shark Typhoons, so we probably have to put that on top of our library rather than making construct this token. This to turn, sorry. We'll see what our opponent does. Cracking Flood of Strand. God, it's, uh, a few long games today. Let's have a look. So this is the Yorion. So they're going to get a card out of their Ice Fang, and they're going to get a whole bunch of cards out of their Abundant Growth. Pretty strong. This is going to be a draw five. Just a casual draw five. So we have a choice here, what we do end of turn. So these are all coming back. Tundra. I think we will put one Shark Typhoon on top of our library here. And then this can come in. And then get a lot of cards and a lot of triggers. And then I think we are cycling the Dreadnought away, perhaps. Might be the misstep that goes, we'll see. We got for a deck. Give us something tasty. Oh, it's the Shark Typhoon, isn't it? We put it there. Yeah, we just do this to get rid of the Dreadnought. Ignore me. 
and put this under there. Yeah, sure. Let's see what we draw. A prismatic ending. It's not the most helpful, is it? Get the shadow spear here. A floated one as well. There's a slight error. So none of our guys are particularly large or in charge. I think we just have to pass the turn here and make a shark. Make a 3-3 and then we can put some guys in front of the Yorion. Our opponent's got so many cards that they should be able to win this game. And endurance, sure. Prismatic ending on our currency converter. Let's misstep that. They've got a whole bunch of cards in their hand though, so. Are they forcing just to get rid of our currency converter? Casting a brainstorm, sure. We could try and cycle for one to hit and hit. No, we don't have another misstep. This is game one. Oh my god, this is still game one. Oh lord. Sure, there's an arrow. This game feels pretty over right now. Our opponent's grind engine is just better than ours. So I can probably hard cast. Uh, they can probably escape cast the euro this turn as well if they want. Feels like that's what they're doing. I'm just going to cycle the shots off in now just to save on time. And we're probably going to concede on our turn. We can't draw a blue card and a force of will here. I'm going to do one of them. So, basically our next draw has to be a removal spell, I suspect. Otherwise, we could just pack this one up. Removal spell still might not be good enough either. Stifle. Yeah, I think we can call it a day there. Alright, let's go to sideboarding. Yikes. So our opponent is a deck that's trying to win with creatures. So we want to get these out of the way. Torpor Orb is very good against your own decks in general. So let's give that a whirl. The missteps are reasonable here. I'm not convinced by these things. I think this is what we're looking at. I honestly think this might be a get rid of force of wills and just try and outvalue our opponent early-ish. The Saga Lantern does have text here, so we can't really get rid of that one. The currency converter is pretty good. Like we can't outgrind them in total, but we can certainly get some stuff done. Maybe it's the endings that go. Right, let's give this this a try. Maybe we could trim a stifle. For ending since we're bringing the torpor orbs. I don't know. We get to make a turn to standstill. That's probably good. Put this out. Could get punished if our opponent has a wasteland here. Maybe we're supposed to play the shadow spear that turn as well. If we're planning on playing the stand. Oh fudge. Big problems. I hate these Orion decks to be honest. They're so greedy and they're never punished for it. Alright. I kind of just have to get a tundra here don't I? So the plan hasn't changed. We're going to make Urza Saga, then Standstill, and then we're going to have Hall of Tears or Generosity, and we're just going to keep looping stuff under Standstill. Our opponent will probably just break the Standstill immediately. I think that's the best play for them. But that's what our plan is, at least. What have you got here? A Birds of Paradise. Sure. That doesn't have any power, so that's good. Let's play this. This might get a Force of Will out of our opponent's hand. Nope, it just sticks. Okay. Lovely. So we make some Urza Saga constructs, and we just keep doing that, really. A wasteland. I guess we don't do that. Okay. So what we eventually do is play the Hall of Helios generously and put the Urza uh, Saga on top of our deck. It's a bit of a faff, but it'll get us there. Uh, apparently do two of their probably three wastelands. Okay, so they have a field of the dead. That's pretty bad for us. So now we have the put Urza uh, Saga on top. We don't really have a way to interact with this field of the dead. So back in the olden times, when for, uh, Stifle Nought was a deck, it used to run wastelands itself. But I thought Urza Saga would be a better play than Wastelands. Can you give me some standstill cards? Doesn't look like they are. Okay. Besage you on our Hall of Helios Generosity. A bit rude. As we get planes here. So now we're in a situation where we're going to have to crack our own standstill at some point. Now we don't have anything good in our hand to do that with. So, And we can just draw into a Shark Typhoon or another Saga. But our opponent has had... Everything they could have wanted. This, this. Oh, okay, they're just cracking into the standstill immediately. Interesting. I guess this means we discard one of our cards. Is there a reason for doing this? What would I like to discard from this selection of things? Um, maybe it's the land? Making land is going to be nice, but we've got the lands we need already. I think these Supreme Verdicts are going to be useful if the game drags on. Yavimaya, Cradle of Growth. Sure. A green Sun Zenith for three. Is this going to be an Endurance or an Uro, just to start things going? Because the Uro will accelerate out of the field of the dead. We do have the option of ploughing. Oh, it's okay, it's just a Leovold. Interesting. I think we can. This we need white, white, blue, blue. Uh, no, white, white. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we kill the Leovold without them drawing a card. And we take the bird. So we get a little two for one here that they can't really interact with, because it's uncountable. 
we might be able to land ourselves a standstill again. But again, they have a field of the dead, so that's something we're going to have to deal with. We would like to put this Tor Orb into play soon. It has some real pros and cons about it. Okay, so we'll play out our Microsynth Gardens. And play out Torpor Orb. An Endurance. Sure. Are they going to shuffle our graveyard in? They are. Cool. I would like those cards to be in my deck. So, Can we plow this? Okay, so we could play out a standstill. Which is a worrying proposition, to be honest. I think we're supposed to play out the Sol Ray Lantern here. And then we'll take out one of their wastelands, I guess. Ah, so we could play a standstill there, but we're kind of under fear of the dead. We need something to do. We're quite liable to just play a standstill and die. So we're going to lose our Torpor Orb. Sure. Another wasteland. Three of them. Sure. I don't think we can cycle uh, the Sol Ray Lantern yet. Source to plowshares. I think we just have to play the standstill and hope that this slows our opponent down. We have... Because they shuffled all the sagas in, we've got eight draws that immediately start doing stuff under standstill. But we could just get absolutely screwed by this Field of the Dead. Okay, just putting the urine into hand, which doesn't count for the spell. We have a Brainstorm that we don't really want to use. Let's pass the turn. Our opponent is just a bigger, better deck with more value in than what we have. So, Okay, so we're going to get to draw some cards here off of our opponent's Abundant Growth. I like that. That was a good gas up. I didn't fancy playing the whole... Um, Field of the Dead game there, which is good for us. I don't think we need to fire off an end of turn brainstorm. I think we're better off doing a brainstorm now, like this. Okay, I like some of these cards. I don't think I want this Ottawara just yet, and probably spare a ponder. We can leave that on top if we need it. Um, I think this is fine. Make a shot. Okay, so they're into the Field of the Dead now, so beating this is going to be very difficult. This is why, oh lord, that's a scary one, isn't it? Yeah, nothing we can do about that. We don't have forces in our deck. So they're going to get a load more zombies here. The value continues to accrue. Let's crack this. Get ourselves an island, I guess. We're going to brainstorm because we're going to have a lot of mana tied up in Supreme Verdict next turn. All right. Sort of a game plan emerging. Let's put these two on top. So I guess first step is, I guess we play out the, you know, uh, we do this first. White, white, blue, blue. Let's clean the board off. And let's deploy our Microsynth Gardens. Deploy our Phyrexian Dreadnought. And stifle the trigger. So we can have 24 power next turn. We only get to, well, we can have 25 power. We only get to attack with 12 to 13 of it next turn, depending on if we equip. So that should be able to crunch through a decent number of zombies. And we've got rid of the scariest thing that they can blink in the Primeval Titan. Now, they have a Wasteland. So our Microsynth Gardens is probably not going to do a lot there. Yep, there it goes. Sure. Fear of the Dead, getting some more. They got Flood of Strands, so they get two two bites of the cherry of making guys. Our guy is going to have lifelink and be huge. This looks like an array, maybe? No, you're just doing the Yorion. Sure. So this will get them one card draw, which is certainly better than... Oh, is this non-lands or is it specified types? Okay, yes, yeah, so they couldn't have blinked their little guy, their um, Dark Armor. So get all their stuff back. We've got to really speed up, actually, looking at the clock. Looks like we're getting source to plow shares, perhaps. No, just to brainstorm. We've still got white mana up, so they could plow our Dreadnought. We should do it now instead of waiting until our turn. Okay, we'll equip this to this guy. Using blue and blue. We have two whites and we have a blue here. So this guy is pretty large. So he can come in, do some damage. We just need to protect this. We have a misstep to protect this from swords. Intuition. Okay. What nonsense is this going to be? Prismatic endings. Many prismatic endings. Sure. Let's see if they pay two to dodge minor misstep or not. They did not. They made a mistake. That was entirely play aroundable. Ugh. Not a fan of that. Okay. They did just have all the things. So we gain. A, we don't gain any life from that because it's the prismatic ending. But we do get to kill this Yorion, I suppose. I think we are done here. More or less. This matchup has been very boring, to be honest. Sure, it's fine. We could have burned off our Saga Lantern, but if we need to in a pinch, we can always plow this. Let's get rid of Yorion once and for all, so they can't keep bouncing it if they draw a Caracas. If we don't find a way of winning the game soon. Okay, that's that's a way of winning the game, potentially. Let's have a look. We have a Stifle. So we put Ponder on the bottom, then the Saga, then the Stifle. Draw the Stifle. 
So we pay out the Dreadnought for white mana here. Stifle the trigger. Okay, we get to play this game for a little bit longer. Then we pass. We probably have to plow the collector roof so we can get the lifelink. But we'll see how that transpires. We have Caracas for a Uro. Yeah, there's an Uro. Sure. And they can pay a load of mana to put some more life into their stuff and draw some cards. Which is obviously good. And gives them more zombies as well. But we can stop it from ever being an attacker or a blocker. So was this... 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So they've got 10 power at the moment. If they play this Uro, then they'll have a lot more. We might be having to kill the Collector Roof this turn. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Okay, they didn't hit a land. That's something. Uh, what have they got? A snake. This has Death Touch, which is a pain. 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10. 2, 4, 6... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Huh. Let's bounce this Ur out of the way. Not a great play, but it's where we're at right now. Urza Saga. We knew that was coming, didn't we? 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So they can block with everything. Kill our guy. Where does that leave us? It leaves us with the Shark Typhoon. I think this is fine. Should probably just concede here. I think we're just losing this game. Have they got a plow here? If they got a plow, then we can concede. Okay, just making another guy. Two, four, six, eight, ten, seven, seven. Oh, we're a game behind actually. We can't even concede if we want to, could we? Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So I guess we kill one of those. We kill the Death Touch guy for later. So we kill a whole bunch of guys. And then we're making Shark Typhoons. Hmm. Ramlant Excavator. Okay, so we're going to wasteland us into oblivion. I see. We can concede this game. Yeah, that was a very long and tedious one. Uh, I'm not really a fan of the old Yorion control decks. Which is one of the good things that Initiative done, is push that deck out of the meta. But I suspect we'll come back in once we get some bans. It's just a very, very long and arduous one. And they have so many, like, niche things in it. Like, having all these wastelands. But they found three of them in their game. Sort of thing. So it's kind of... They did two of one of them, to be fair, actually. But they had... Oh, they found all four of the... Uh, Three of them, yes. They did shoot it for one of them, but having a five-color deck with wastelands in that can sometimes wasteland you out of the game in the early turns is kind of annoying, but it's fine. Like It's not too powerful or anything. It's just really annoying. All right, let's go on to round four. Oh, God, it's a long one today. All right, one to play. We've got Island Ponder into a saga game. I think we can keep this. Prince Mulligan to six cards. Prince Mulligan to five cards. Okay, so now we're looking for a force of will in our opener. We're keeping the fetch down for the purpose of brainstorm. Standstill, I like a standstill. We can have that on turn two. And then we can have more more goodies. So I think we put this, this, and this. I'm not sure if our library. Maybe we should have hidden the standstill and put the Caracas just in case we get discarded this turn. Chromox. Yeah. I thought you would be some sort of Chromox based critter. Solitude. Okay, so we're just against the initiative again. A white plume adventurer, sure. We did beat this first time around, so... But our opponent seems like they're better at mulliganing because they mulligan to a turn one white plume, which is the best thing. Pr probably the best thing you can do in Legacy at the moment. Neither that or Dragon's Channel on turn one. Yes, I know you can kill people on turn one in Legacy, but just as a general rule. So this Caracas that doesn't do anything. We now have a Brainstorm, where we know one of the cards on top of our library. I think we have to Brainstorm and then fetch land here. Standstill is not a card we get to use this game. Okay, so we put back a standstill. We put back a Caracas here. We play out our Urza Saga. And we're going to use this to get a Dreadnought. And then stick a Shadow Spirit and hope that we don't die while we're waiting to do that. Which is certainly possible here. Yep, so just forging up their guy. So it's 5 this turn, 10 next turn, then dead. So we're going to have to make some chump blockers with the Saga until we can get our Dreadnought going. Okay, they didn't have a Seasoned Dungeoneer because you played that pre-combat. So that's nice. Doesn't mean they don't have a threat though. Okay. Take your guy. Let's get this counter on. Uh, I think we just play out the Mice in the Gardens. And then we'll pass. We'll make a Chomp Blocker this turn. Next turn we'll make a Dreadnought and stick a big old thing on it. Five. So they had a Seasoned Dungeoneer, they would have uh, cast it last turn. So... 
I think this is a chump block from our Rezo Saga here. A very aggressive source to plowshares. Makes me a little bit worried about what they got in their hand in terms of more plows. Cavern of Souls. Naming... Construct. Okay, so we've got Walking Ballista in our future as well. We've got two counters on. Sure. We're in a spot. So we would like to float mana from this. Then we will go and get ourselves a Phyrexian Dreadnought. We will then stifle this trigger. Then what are we doing? We want to play out our Shadow Spit, I think. Then we play out as a Saga. And we equip our Shadow Spit. Maybe they don't have the removal spell for our Dreadnought. If they don't, then I think we're okay. If they do, then we just die. Now they can plow it, which buys us another like couple of turns, but they will be going to throw in the dead three soon. I suspect our opponent has it, because they always have it, right? Seasoned Dungeoneer. That kills us as well, because the White Plume is unblockable, and then they can ping us with a Walking Ballista. If we have had slightly more mana, so that we could... Well, we don't have a Stifle, I guess, but you could Stifle the Seasoned Dungeoneer trigger, which would be pretty nice. Okay. Um, what? They had the win on board and they got a Solitude so that they don't win this turn. That seems wrong. Now, they're probably still going to win the game anyway, but that seems really wrong to me because you had the win on board. Okay, sure. Yeah, there was loads of other stuff they could have got there as well. Weird. A Simian Spirit guy wins it for them, but they decided not to do that. Okay. And then we're dead. Sure. Okay, let's go to sideboarding. What do we want here? We wanted Supreme Verdicts. We wanted Torpor Orbs. Prismatic Ending can deal with Chalices. What did we bought out before? Standstills feel bad. The Soul Guide Lantern feels bad. So we're looking at something like this. I think this is probably fine. I think this is what we won with last time. So we just roll with it. Another play. Turn two guy. Or turn three guy if we have to force of will. Now, this is what our deck does, right? So let's play this one out and pass. If we have to force of will, we have to force of will. It's unfortunate, but depends what our opponent plays here. Emiria. Tapped. Okay, so we would love to draw a blue card this turn. That would be wonderful. That's not a blue card, but we're still going to go get ourselves a Tundra and then play Mike Synth Gardens. And play this. If we get to untap, we get to make another Dreadnought. Just wish we'd have drawn a blue card that turn. Please don't have a removal. One time. One time, let us have our fun. A Solitude. Okay. They'll probably get to deploy a threat as well here. We've got a Cushion of Life at least. Cavern of Souls. This could be a Thalia. They'd put on human. No, it's just a rubbish little ballista. Sure. Now we draw the force of will. Where were you last turn? I suppose we put out a flooded strand here. And pass. So we can counter a white plume. But we can't counter a seasoned dungeon here. Because of the cavern. Right, it's getting hit by the ballista. Caves of Chaos Adventure, I believe. This can't be counted because it's been paid for with Cavern of Souls mana. So I think we're just dead in a sec. Well, we've got 30 life, so we've got a little bit of time. We do have these Supreme Verdicts in our deck as well. But this does effectively draw your opponent cards as well. Uh, we have Brainstorm with a Fetch Land. Let's see how good it can be. Uh, the forces just have to go back, I think. It's not doing anything for us here. And we'll crack this for a Tundra. I think we're pondering here. So we can make a large guy, but then we're going to be stuck with these two Force of Wills that we don't want. So I think I have to go any order and shuffle. It's Caracas not really doing it. We'll play this planes though, so that we can plow the Chaos of Chaos Adventurer. I think we probably have to plow it now. All right. So they can forge on their walking ballista, which gives it more things to ping away, which is nice. We could have tried to kill whatever they put the counters on, but they're always going to put them on the ballista, and we would rather get the Chaos of Chaos Adventurer dead. And also. The Caves of Chaos Adventurer could be blinked and really blow us out because some builds have run at Ephemerate before. I think it was important just to get that guy down because the counters on the blister are just better because they just go all over the place and ping stuff. All right. They're just adding counters to this guy. And a Thalia. Sure. So we might be able to catch the Thalia with a Shark Typhoon next turn. So we can do a Shark Typhoon for three. A Shadow Spear. Not really where we're at right now, is it? So I think we should play out this Caracas. And so we can bounce the Thalia or we can make a shark. I would rather just kill the Thalia. So we'll try and do that instead. Because you want to get the shark on board and draw some cards. So we're back down to starting light at all. 
black side from our opponent. Swinging with both. Sure. Cycle this. Blue. Blue. One. 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 Make a three three. Make a four four next turn. What they can do here is they can. Actually, no, we're not blocking here, are we? We're just taking the damage. And then we're using this to attack back. Because if we block there, they can just ping after the first strike. So they can th remove three counters to kill our shark if they want to next turn. Okay, they're doing it now before we untap. That's fair enough. Okay, we have no shark. Understood. A prismatic ending. This costs us two mana to do. Probably fine. So they're going to ping us for two. We could have bounced the Thalia if we wanted to first to save us a bit of mana there. So we're going to make a shark. And we're going to bounce the Thalia in our opponent's turn. And try and steal the initiative back that way. City of Traitors. So mana is certainly not a problem for them. Okay, this puts them in the Throne of the Dead 3, which is very bad for us. What are we looking at here? Seasoned Dungeoneer, I guess. Or Caves of Chaos Adventurer. Yeah. And they go back into the dungeon again. Okay. Understood. No damage from this. Just something. And there it is again. Let's make a 1-1. One, one. This can steal the initiative back. But they, uh, they get to cast the top card of the library for free with the Caves of Chaos Adventure. So that's pretty scary. So what we're trying to draw this turn is Supreme Verdict. Steal the initiative, Supreme Verdict, there, guys. So they're going to be hitting us with a bunch of things. Uh, we can stifle the trigger of them getting the initiative back. It's not the worst. It's not great either, but what are they going to get off the top of their library? A walking ballista. Okay. Kind of an awkward situation for us here. Step one is bouncing the Thalia. Step two, I think, is making a shark. It doesn't have to be very big. I think we're trying to stifle and maybe draw a plow. So this is just going under the white plume. A brainstorm. They're plowing our shark token. I guess we brainstorm. Hmm, these don't feel the most helpful right now. We definitely want to land. Prismatic ending is probably going to be too expensive to do anything with. We'll kill the walking ballista, but the walking ballista is probably going to kill us. Um, nah, I think we're dead. Yeah, like, their deck is better than our deck. Um, I think I've learned quite a lot about how this deck is built that we're playing. But we're going to play the final round, see if we can scrape a 2-3. So we're on the play. We can make a turn to Dreadnought. Let's keep. We can start with a basic island as well. This keeps us relatively insulated from Wasteland. Is this going to be another initiative deck? Feels like an initiative deck. Haven't actually played against that much initiative lately, so I guess I was due to have a league just full of the stuff. So we have two choices here. We can either stifle the trigger or we can just make our Dreadnought. I think we just make our Dreadnought and hope that it, they don't have removal spell in hand. Or in the top few cards of their library. I think playing the Saga might be better than the Gardens here. Gives us some more options on the following turn. Play Saga. Play Dreadnought. Stifle that trigger. Hope they don't have a removal spell. If they do have a removal spell, we at least have some life and we can go into an Urza Saga plan. But if they don't have a removal spell, then we get to make a Saga token next turn or a Microsynth copy in the Dreadnought. And we get to bash for 12, take the initiative. Let's see if they scry or forge. They're scrying. Two on the bottom. That's what we want to see. Our parents finally play an Ancient Tomb. Four mana. Palace Jailer, Seasoned Dungeoneer, okay. So we're not blocking the White Plume this turn. Understood. But we do kill them next turn. So we kill them for 12 on our next turn. Then our next turn is when we get attacked them with the Mike Synth Gardens copy. So, yeah. Now, I could have a plow here, which would be unfortunate. It's on top of your library opponents. Another Seasoned Dungeoneer, understood. Both your creatures unblockable, I understand. But because they didn't go down the Forge route, they're not doing as much damage as they could be. So play this out. And we'll go attacks. In with the big boy. We have some choices here. We can either try and copy it now while they only have potential for plow. Or we can hold it up so if they do try and remove it. I think we just have to hold up in case they do try and remove it then we copy it. I think that's the safer plan here. Because we're going to have to put seven toughness in front of our dreadnought. Or eight toughness if we're going to give it some shadow spear action now obviously if our opponent taps out and just gives us an opportunity to copy it then we will but while they had the ability to plow us i didn't really want to just try and copy it and end up with nothing so it's going to give them a 4-1 skeleton oh wait no sorry just not uh, that's if they go through another one apologies it's late uh okay so they have an ancient tomb so they didn't pump their creature that's good for us 
So they get the initiative. Yeah, so now they get the skeleton. We also have like a full group of cards. Our opponents probably thinking that we've got something. We don't. We have nothing. But they don't know that. And that's sometimes good enough. What do we have here? This is Solitude. Feels like a hard cast Solitude. Ancient Tomb as well. Could be uh, Entreat the Angels, whatever it's called. So this guy goes into the Throne of the Dead 3. We stole the initiative off them, but they still managed to run through the, through the dungeon by turn 3. Pretty gross. So I don't think any of these cards win in the game. They will untap all of their creatures is the only issue. But we will have a big lifelinking boy. 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. They can put 19 toughness. 20 toughness they can put. Oh, there's an initiative deck. Okay, so I think they made a slight mistake here. I don't think that's the one you go for there. Now, White Plume Adventurer being a broken card means that they get to untap all their guys, which is a real swiz. Put a man on this. Get ourselves a Shadow Spear. Play ourselves a Saga. Equip Shadow Spear to this guy. We have to attack here, unfortunately, because the amount of damage coming on the backswing is huge. Right, we're going to clear up a bunch of their creatures and gain some life here. Alright. Is this a chump block or is this a part of a larger block? So I can put a seasoned engineer and a skeleton in front of it. And I take the initiative, I get to scry. Okay, so far we got ten power in front of it. They will be gaining six from this though. Okay, so they're going to get rid of their white plume instead of their skeleton. Alright. Why does white plume adventurer untap your whole team? Who knows? Who could possibly answer why Wizards of the Coast made that card that way? Wow, they're putting all of them there. Interesting. Uh, so we go 5 to this, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we do leave them with the White Plume, but we take out the two Seasoned Dungeoneers. Feels pretty good, to be honest. So we gain a bunch of life. We deal with their guys. We didn't get the initiative back because they put enough blockers in the way. Because Seasoned Dungeoneer has, is uh, lopsided. So that's why I didn't use the Skeleton. They were more concerned with keeping the initiative. So we got 34 life, so we've got a few turns to try and find something. We've got Shark Typhoon, which can nip across and take the initiative, which is probably better than making a 2-2, uh, two, two, then a 3-3. Three, three. I guess then it'll be a 4-4 four, four Saga. Maybe that's okay, but they're going to forge up again soon. So I guess we see what we draw and we can play. Chalice for zero. Uh, I think they've just made a mistake playing that one because they put two colorless in their pool. And then they played a chalice for zero. I don't think it's going to matter here. Okay, so the Shark Typhoon plan, not looking very viable. They're making a Construct Token, it's something we can do because we have a basic. All right, we are losing this, but we might be able to find a Stifle or something and get ourselves another Dreadnought. And then that'll probably be good enough. Yeah, that's it, you untap your whole team for, for some reason. Solga Lantern, not a very exciting one. So you're on planes into making a 2-2. So they're probably going to pump the Menace guy here. Yeah, there it is. I'm just going to make this creature now and pass the turn with an F6. Just because it's easier. I'm tired. Yep, bash in for your 12. What's that? They all untap. A Brainstorm. I think we are making a Construct. What do we find here? I don't think our Friction Dreadnought looks particularly good here. We just get Currency Convert because it pumps our guys. It's for the strand seem terrible. Pass a turn. So now we can at least put these constructs in front of stuff. So we can double block the menace guy this turn. Take six. And next, uh, then we take another five. So we, we go to three. And next turn we can block the white plume and go to one. And then what? I guess we make a shark token to block the arc and next turn perhaps. Probably fine. There's many ways that we lose the game from here. It'd be a miracle if we win this one. But we could always somehow get the initiative back because even if we supreme verdict it doesn't do anything because they're in the initiative because multiplayer mechanics in two player games not great okay one two three four five so this is a solitude here so this leaves us in chomp block territory i think well we do gain six we do gain four life from this which isn't the end of the world so this is 14 so if they so what do we have to do here we have to Chump block and draw. We can't even cast a Supreme Verdict, can we? 
And if we let this, if we let all this hit us, oh god, I don't know. I don't know how we're supposed to win this one. I think the short answer is that we're not. But we'll take a draw step and then concede the game most likely. Stand still, very funny. So we play this land that comes untapped. We can make a shark. So we can block here and here. And then we're just dead. We will concede the game. Oh, was that only game one? Oh lord. I thought that was game two, sorry. I'm just played so many initiative decks today. Yikes. Okay, I, I, I thought that was just game over then. Okay, so the standstills are bad. Sogai Lantern is bad. Our deck is bad. That's probably not very helpful, is it? Um, okay. We'll just a bit like this. I've certainly got some thoughts for the wrap up at the end of this one. But we will we'll play this league to completion. We know we always play our leagues to completion. Because it's you learn something. Even in these miserable games, you're learning something. Well I am at least. On the play. Can we make a big scary creature? I don't think this hand looks very good. This hand can't cast the force of will we have in it. So it doesn't look very good. We can get a turn three guy, which is not good enough against the initiative. I think we should mulligan again. Okay. This does a thing. So we have Dreadnought, Caracas, Stifle, Force of Will. Okay. So we get rid of these two. We try and draw a blue card on our second turn. Let's play this one out. Maybe we could have played the Caracas there in case they play a Thalia on turn one. That's certainly a thing to think about. Don't be able to bounce him and then make our guy. Okay. No play on turn one. Please draw a blue card. I'm begging you. Give me a blue card. It's not a blue card. But our, our hand does one thing. So we're going to do the thing. Which is not a good enough thing these days. Alright. We have a thing. We have a super big scary boy. Our opponent could have some removal spells. Wish we'd have had the blue card. Alright. So we're going to gain 12 life. Which will buy us probably two talents. <clears throat> Do they have a follow up threat? Is it a white plume? It is a white plume. Okay. So we're dead in four turns, I believe. Okay, over to us. A tundra. We should play out our currency converter. And maybe we're converting our force of will into something that maybe does something at some point. Maybe we're wrong to keep the force of will there. With our opener, we should have kept the other one. Something like a shark typhoon or something. But we still end up in a very similar spot here, unfortunately. I think it was worth high rolling for the drawing a blue card and protecting our guy. So this looks like a okay, an elite spellbinder. Interesting. I think we will draw and discard because at least we put the card underneath our thing. Um, sure, we'll get rid of this force of will. Sure. A three mana brainstorm at least is something I can realistically cast. Force of will isn't. We do get to make a two two soon. Not that that's going to be the most useful thing in the world. Take five this turn. Take 13 next turn. Come on, untap your guy. Okay, so drew a brainstorm. Let's see if we can find anything. We found a plow. So we can put this Ottawara and this Tundra back on top. So we have a plan now. Our plan is, they attack with stuff. We make a 2-2. Two -two. Then we plow their white plume. And then we attack with our 2-2. Two -two. So we're going to be below our starting life shuttle very soon. Caracas, sure. There's a prismatic ending, perhaps, on our currency converter. Something you see more out of the red-white builds. But these builds have lowest petals, so they can sometimes kill two dots with it. Okay, no, it's just something else. Play a Thalia or something. Something irrelevant that I can just crack us out of the way. Oh, why are my opponents playing so slowly today? March of Otherworldly Light. We will make a 2-2. Two -two. Attack with your guys. We will kill your White Plume Adventurer. We've got an Ephemerate. We've got a Plow for our guy. Okay, that's kind of annoying, but fine-ish. Because we're still on a reasonable life total, we can keep playing this game, but I'm not very confident about it. Let's cast this with the Spellbinder. Just power through our deck a little bit. Torpor Orb, interesting. I guess we can put back the Tundra and the Torpor Orb, because we're going to draw the Torpor Orb next turn to play. And we'll play as Mr. Rainforest. That way, if something happens and we need to do something that isn't a Torpor Orb, we can then do that. But they are going into the throne soon, which is usually lights out. Six three turns. Look at my opponent's clock. I've got nine minutes left when I've got 16 and a half. Lots of slow opponents today. And it's making me a bit tired. 
I'm a bit bored. All right, let's get this Torpor Orb down before they get into Throne of the Dead 3. There is a Tundra next card down, which we don't want to draw. So we're going to crack our Misty Rainforest soon. What have they revealed? Let's have a little look. How bad is it? A seasoned Engineer and an Archon of Emeria. We're cracking his end of turn anyway, so we can bounce the Archon next turn when it no longer has Hexproof. Right, that's now for a Tundra. And then back over to us. Another Torpor Orb. Not the one. Right, pass over and we can bounce this 5-6 to buy us some more turns. This looks like a March of the Body Light on our Torpor Orb. Sure. We've got another one anyway. They're in the initiative, so it doesn't matter too much anyway. It's not like we're going to stop them. We just stop them racing one room ahead when they play a guy. There's a seasoned Dungeoneer. A seasoned Dungeoneer. So we need to do some maths here. This goes into the Forge. Where are they putting these counters? Probably on the Elite Spellbinder. Yeah. This is five power. White Plume Adventure on top of their library. Sure. So next turn we go to nine. So if we take this damage, we go to... This is six and this is five. So we have to bounce a creature here. Probably the one that does the most damage. It does give them a rebuy on the draw. But if we don't draw a Supreme Verdict, we die this turn anyway, I think. Five, six, seven, eight, plus the trap. So we cast this. And we live for slightly longer and prolong the agony of playing this very miserable league. <laughs> All right. We take some damage. So they play this white plume that we know about. So they're going to the archives. Next time they're going to throw in their three. Okay, they're just playing this one. I guess this stops us from casting Brainstorm into removal spell. Like this. Although we can cast a... Um, I think we need to ponder because we're looking for the other Supreme Verdict in a second. Uh, any order. Okay, so we can stifle the Throne of the Dead 3 trigger when they cast their White Plume next turn. So that's something. Here comes the White Plume. Oh, it's Elite Spellbinder. Okay, you can take the stifle because we're going to... I guess it doesn't really matter what we do with it. Because they're not casting another spell this turn anyway. So they're not going into the Throne of the Dead 3. And there's no point stifling the Elite Spellbinder trigger here. Okay, so we're looking for a singleton Supreme Verdict that's left in our deck. We did not find that. We found this Hall of Helios Generosity. We will concede the game. Tragically bad league, as you can see from the scores. Let's talk about the deck. So, this is the deck. Uh, we went 1-4. So we beat initiative to begin with, but then we faced against initiative twice more, and they smashed us. Now, the first initiative opponent we had kept some pretty dodgy-looking hands, so... That's why we won. Now, the initiative deck is obviously a deck that's very, very high in power level and probably needs a ban. So it's not bad losing to a deck like that. And it's unfortunate we got paired against it three times. But the problem is this deck is doing two very disparate plans here. So we have this sort of speedy making a 12-12 type shenanigans. But then we've also got this sort of slower, grindier plan here with our Hall of Helios Generosity. So we've got these two different things going on in the deck and it's just not very good to have them both at the same time i don't think this is worth doing so we basically we're like we're like a worse shark still deck and we're a worse dreadnought deck um so i think i've conclusively proven why the old blue white stifle nought deck from like 15 years ago or whatever isn't really something that people are going to be updating it's just not worth it that being said though i think Dreadnought itself isn't very strong. Not just the deck, is, but I think Dreadnought itself isn't very strong. I think you need a lot of stuff to support it. Stifle is a bad card. So we are running this card that doesn't really do a lot without the Dreadnought, which is a bit of an issue for us. But what I think we should do if we want to do this is maybe stop trying to play white. And that makes our mana base a little bit better with the Sagas. And we can probably fit in some Wastelands as well. And then we can play some Dazers, and we can play this aggressive deck, possibly with some Delvers in as well. Although, if we've got a load of artifacts and stuff in, maybe... I guess the Fraction Dreadnought is just in the creature slot for that point. So we can probably have some Delvers or something like that in it. Just have some sort of aggressive bent in a mono blue deck. I've seen like the mono blue Mercurial Spell Dancer deck lately, so something more akin to that. Uh, so we'll keep our forces in and we'll keep our dazers in. So obviously Friction Dreadnought is quite easy to answer for a lot of decks. But if we've got protection in the form of like Force of Will, dazes, and minor missteps, we can protect our Dreadnought for the couple of turns that it takes to get it off. 
So essentially we're looking at like a tempo deck that its backup plan is an Urza Saga, more or less. So I think that's probably a much better route. Or you can just scrap all the Dreadnought stuff and do the Shark Typhoon Shark Steel deck. But that deck is struggling a bit at the moment in the meta because of the initiative. So there's an obvious monumental flaw in the deck that we played today. And not really much to say about it. I suspected that would probably be the case. But I wanted to try and update an old deck. And this was about the closest I could get to the ones that I remember people slinging at my local store many, many, many years ago. So, not every experiment is going to be a success. That's why I'm doing some of these experiments for you. Because, you know, you watch my content. It saves you having to make these same mistakes. But I might revisit the Dreadnought in the blue list that I have in mind. It's like Wastelands and lots of other disruption elements like missteps and dazes and things. And see how that works out for us. I think that's going to be a lot stronger. And it's just going to be a more focused plan. I don't think you can have too disparate of a plan right now with the current way that Legacy is. The other option you can do with this as well is go more into the uh, Urza Saga package in terms of having some like Ancient Tomb action. So you can play your Saga on one, make a token, make a token, and, uh, you know, possibly do a stifle there because you probably want some lotus petals in it as well so maybe taking a leaf out of the like mono black saga storm deck and running some stuff that really is really good with the saga so that's more of a realistic win condition and we also pair it with our dreadnought so that's possibly something we could do so i'm gonna have a little think about these if anyone's got any ideas please send them across but personally this was a pretty miserable deck to play I didn't have a very fun time, and sometimes that's going to happen. My opponents played incredibly slowly, and it was quite tedious as well. But that is life sometimes. And I made the mistake of playing this deck, so you didn't have to, so you're welcome. All right, I think we're done now, so like, comment, and subscribe. If I can get some subscribers out of making this video, then that'd be something, right? Okay, thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.